So today we're going to talk about ADB, uh, Android Developer Bridge. If you just type ADB in the terminal, uh, it's going to bring up the help so you can see what's going on. Uh, if we type ADB devices, we're going to see what devices are hooked to our uh, USB connections here. And you can see I have my LG G4, the T-Mobile H811 hooked up. Uh, of course, you have to have enabled uh, Android development bugging bridge in, uh, in your Android settings. So let's go ahead. We're going to take a, a screen capture here, ABD shell screen cap uh, dash P. We're going to save it there. So we're just capturing the screen of the device. So we've sent that command, it saved that to the SD card as screenshot JPJ or JPG, excuse me. And now we're going to pull. We're going to use what's called pull. Shell is the way that you can pass command. Pull is the way you can pull a file from the phone to your local machine. So we're going to grab that screenshot. And there you go. You see that it just showed up here. Opened up. And I see we have a problem here. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's try PNG. There we go. So let's save it as a PNG instead of a JPEG. I think that'll work a little better for us. So we're going to go ahead and now pull that PNG to here. There we go. Let's take a look at it. There we go. So, so you can see running AOSCP Oreo. Uh, the great thing about ADB is it allows you to do a lot of low-level stuff. Um, let's remove that screenshot that was no good. So let's copy the screenshot we made, and let's call it uh, the screenshot. So if we push, now the pull was to pull it from the phone to the computer. Push is the way that we push it from where we are, the computer, to the phone. So I say I'm going to push that file to the SD card on the phone. Transfer, and now it's on the phone. So another thing we can do is ADB shell. Now we used shell a minute ago, and we passed the command. But if you don't give it a command, you actually just log on to the underlying Linux kernel on the phone. So here we are, we're talking to the, uh, the OS here on the phone, we're looking around, and see there's our screenshot, right? We just removed that JPEG one that was no good, and you can see our screenshot PNG and then our SS PNG, that one that we copied and then pushed back to the phone. So pretty handy to be able to get files back and forth. Once you're on the phone, you can use SU to become the super user if your phone is rooted. And uh, it may give you a pop-up on the screen, ask you uh, to acknowledge if it's the first time uh, that you're using it. Uh, once again, you can just type ADB or ADB-help to see all the different things that are available in ADB. There are tons of options, and there's no way we can cover all of them right here. But we just want to be familiar with how this works. Um, throughout the course or this video series, we won't particularly be using ADB um, during the video themselves, but you'll be using ADB to transfer items uh, if you're following along with the video. Um, here you can see uh, the push command we just used, and right below that is the pull command we just used. Um, you can also use things like sync, uh, keep file, file synchronized. So we have shell, uh, and then you can also just give it uh, the shell and then give it a command like we did just a moment ago when we wanted to take that screen capture. Of course, you have to know what command that you're going to give it uh, when you do that. So uh, a big one we're going to use a lot is logcat, where we can view the device logs, and we're going to be able to save those logs somewhere so we can use them later, review them. 
a lot of times when you're doing uh, kernel work or when you're building custom ROMs, you're really going to need to pull some logs so you can see what's going on and what's working or not working. So A to B log cat, here you go. You can just see that it's printed out. And then every time the log gets updated, it continues to give us more information. And this will go on forever as long as the phone is on and we're still uh, hooked up. And you can see there's a lot of activity going on uh, on this particular phone here. Uh, of course, this is a, a fairly new uh, build of um, Oreo. And so there's still actually quite a few little problems that are being worked out. But we press Control C and we can stop it at any time. If we use this pipe and then the T command, so this is a pipe that's that straight up and down uh, button, usually above your Enter key. And we use the T command, we're going to actually be able to see it on the screen and we're going to save it somewhere else. So we're going to call it uh, logcat text console.txt. So we're seeing it here on the screen and we're saving it to a file. And you can see it in, in this folder right here starting to save. So, and here's just as we're watching it play out on the screen, it's also writing it to this file. Super handy. Uh, so you can do that. Once again, control C will allow you to um, finish uh, pulling that log cat. And so uh, some, um, some other things we can do, of course, we can reboot the phone. We can reboot to the boot loader, which we're going to use in a minute when we go to uh, look at fast boot. But uh, you can reboot to your recovery. You can reboot uh, just the phone in general. Um, here we are. We're going to reboot to the recovery. It's going to take a minute for the phone itself to, to physically reboot. And of course, it popped up because it, you know, now is uh, showing me the files that are in the recovery. Uh, ADB kill server is a way to stop the ADB server. If you like can't find your device, you might have to kill server, and then you can start again by ADB devices. There it goes, it starts the daemon, and then we found our phone and it's in recovery mode. So just a quick tutorial of how to use ADB. Um, you're going to be using this a lot for ROM development and kernel development.